rhythms originating in the ventricle. These are where we start getting into trouble, okay? The key to this is all of these, okay, with some exceptions that you guys will never need to know about, are wide, okay? If the patient's regular EKG is narrow and now they are wide, you are probably in the domain of rhythms originating in the ventricles, okay? So if you go to the emergency department, you pull 1,000 EKGs of wide rhythms. That means the QRS is wider than three beats in patients who ordinarily have narrow rhythms. Or if you go to the ER and you pull 1,000 EKGs of patients who are greater than 100 beats a minute and have a wide QRS, you have an 80% chance right off the bat that you're dealing with one of these ventricular rhythms and probably a dangerous one, okay? So if you don't know if it's real fast and it's real wide and you just don't know and the patient is hemodynamically unstable, what are you gonna do? You got two options. Number one, you can give them adenosine. Ventricular tachycardia does not care about adenosine, okay? It'll just laugh at you, all right? That's option one because if it comes from the ab above, up in the chambers, uh, the adenosine will make it stop. Um, option number two is just cardioverted. Nobody ever died of getting a shock that you appropriately delivered, okay? They may be mad at you, they may curse, it may hurt, but they won't die of it. They will die of untreated ventricular tachycardia and a blood pressure of 50, all right? PVCs. PVCs is a twitch, it's like an eyelid twitch. It's just an imbalance in the muscle, okay? And you can trigger it the same way you can trigger eyelid twitches. Not enough sleep, too much caffeine, taking crystal meth. Oh, wait. Um, so these PVCs uh, are not a problem unless there are a ton of them. If there's an absolute ton of them, like more than 25% of their heartbeats are PVCs, in the very long term, over the course of months to years, it can cause heart failure. Those people I need to ablate. I need to get rid of their PVCs. Couplet just means two PVCs in a row. And again, I hate this example because this one, while it is just barely wider than three small boxes, if you showed me that right off the bat, I mean, the only thing that would tell me that that's a PVC is the fact that this points up and that one points straight down and that's not something the heart does, okay? They're usually gonna look more like this, all right? Now, once again, we go through a whole bunch of things that are the exact same thing. The only difference between them is how fast they are. Idioventricular rhythm is uh, a ventricular rhythm that is less than 60 beats a minute. An accelerated idioventricular rhythm is a rhythm that is wide, complex, and 60 to 100 beats a minute. And ventricular tachycardia is a wide, complex rhythm that is more than 100 beats a minute. Okay, that's the only difference, all right? Torsades is a very special rhythm. You need to recognize this on site. Why is torsades important? Can be, yep. So how is it different? Magnesium can often terminate torsades. If you give them a big slug of mag, like two grams of mag, just bam. Uh, you can often terminate this rhythm. There's another reason why, and that's um, because a lot of times torsades is caused by long QT, okay? So what you don't wanna do is give that patient a bunch of Zofran, a bunch of amiodarone, and you know, drag that QT out even more. When you see torsades, uh, they are going to go into V-fib if they don't self-terminate. The nice thing about torsades is that generally speaking, uh, most episodes of torsades last a few seconds and burn themselves out, okay? But if you see that, um, treat it like V-fib. Shock it if you don't happen to have magnesium sitting right there. And even if you do have magnesium sitting right there, mm, their blood pressure is gonna crash pretty quick. As Soon as they pass out, stop looking for your magnesium and just shock them, okay? All right, coarse V-fib, fine V-fib and asystole. Um, if you ever see a patient in asystole, this is not an ACLS, this is my advice to you from having done electrical rhythms for 12 to 14 hours a day for eight years. Uh, if you ever see a patient in asystole at a code, you shock them. You give them 360 joules to the chest and see what happens. Because if they're really in asystole, no harm. If they're in fine V-fib, you may cardiovert them back to sinus and bring a dead man back to life. 
And the difference is how high you have the gain set on the EKG, right? So this fine V-fib, if you gain that down from 3x to 1x, it's going to look just like this on your monitor. And a lot of you are going to be carrying LifePak 12s and LifePak 20s. And the screens on those things aren't that high res in the first place. So like I said, if you show up and you've got an unconscious patient who is in asystole, start by shocking them. Okay? No harm. Okay? George can tell you not to listen to me later, but I'm telling you, I, I have seen many occasions in which this is just under-recognized V-fib. All right? All right.